Hi, I'm Danielle Hartman. Welcome to Port in PA, a series sharing the stories of Pennsylvania's craft beer industry. This episode is a special one. We're celebrating women in the brewing industry. The Pink Boot Society is an international organization with the mission to assist, inspire, and encourage women beer professionals through education. A few of the Pennsylvania chapters invited us to join them on their annual collaboration brew day. Today is our, one of our collaborative brew days, um, every year around March 8th, and the date always kind of changes a little bit. March 8th is International Women's Day, but the Pink Boots Society, this is our largest national fundraiser. We do collaborative brew days. For us, it's a chance to get in the brewery, get hands-on, learn about how the beer is made, but it's also a chance for a lot of networking and you know planning for the year to come and what we got going on. I mean, we're going to do a lot of beer drinking, too. <laughs> International Women's Day is all about celebrating women's accomplishments in a variety of different fields and it just made natural sense to lift up the beer industry and celebrate all of the women that are involved in what is usually perceived to be a male dominated field and just to kind of put a little spotlight on our participation in the industry. You do not need to be a Pink Boots member, you do not need to be a brewer to be here. It is really all about women that are in the beer or craft beverage industry coming together and doing something cool, brewing a beer, something we can all be proud of. Um, it's also hugely about networking. We have women who work in front of house, back of house, sales, companies that sell things to breweries. Uh, really just, if you're an awesome woman and you work in beer, then you're welcome. Most of our chapter is not brewers, so we usually don't do this kind of thing. So it's kind of cool for us to see the production side of things rather than beer just coming from one brewery and then another brewery and then another brewery. We all kind of work together for the day. And the common element for most of the collaboration beers is the hot blend. So everyone has free reign over the style, the final gravity, the ABV, the you know release information, all of that. But if we're all using that same hot blend, it's really interesting to see all the different beers that can come out of it. You know, they can be so varied, but still so unified by that hot blend. Making a beer together, coming together, and utilizing ingredients in a in a fun way. It starts in Denver actually with the uh, Pink Boots hop selection. So over the Great American Beer Festival, they get together and they select the hop varietals, and that hop varietal becomes the Pink Boots blend. And that Pink Boots blend is then purchased by different breweries and utilized. And the money that is raised from the sale of that hop blend goes back into local chapters and the national chapter. Breweries from all around the world register to brew a beer with portions of the sales from that beer getting donated back to Pink Boots. We have uh, groups from like Harrisburg and Wall and Paul Peck, and we have New Jersey and Delaware as well. So we have a very wide chapter and our chapter's brewing 11 different beers, but it, they're brewing on all different days. Um, so today we're at Triple Bottom. This is our largest event. This one's open to everybody, where some of the other ones are just open to women from their brewery. This is one of several brew days that are happening for our chapter. Some of the brew days involve all of us getting together and having a hand in it. Some of the brew days are just that brewery saying, hey, we're brewing a beer. We bought the Pink Boots Hot Blend. We're gonna make a beer. We're gonna contribute proceeds to your chapter. Hopefully we're gonna have around five or so beers that are all made in the name of Pink Boots Society this year. So hopefully we're gonna do some tap takeover events and special release events. Bring the public out, have them try all our beers, get some information in their hands about what Pink Boots Society does and what we're all about. Pink Boots Society is an international nonprofit organization that exists to assist, inspire, and encourage women beer professionals through education. The Pink Boots Society is, well, A, it's the nonprofit organization that supports women in the brewing industry, but I think more than that, it's a uh, place where women brewers and women in the industry can come together and find a community. The Pink Boots Society is 
an organization that really exists to empower women in beer. So provide opportunities for them to come together, collaborate, learn from each other, and really just you know rise up and be more represented in the beer industry. So there are opportunities for various scholarships, whether that's in production like brewing sciences or uh, in service like Cicerone is a certification that you can say that you are a knowledgeable beer server and really represent like different beer styles well to consumers. So anyone who is interacting with beer in any way, Pink Boots is here to kind of like help uplift you in the industry. The rules for Pink Boots is that you just have to make a portion of your salary in beer. And it really can be a wide variety. Like we have people who sell insurance to breweries and bars. We have writers who write about food and beer. We have PR agents. We have sales, marketing, kind of anything. They also have now allowed students. So if you're going to school and it is brewing beer related, you can register along with breweries and planning, which is a great resource for them because they have people they can talk to that have already been through it. And thank God for me, because I'm getting older, <laughs> been in this business for a while. They are now, if you uh, have been in the industry long enough, they will let you be a retired <laughs> brewing professional member. <laughs> There are many opportunities for people to be involved in the brewing industry that aren't directly related to brewing. And I think that bringing that to light and encouraging more people to get involved in the industry because there are ancillary support uh, positions available is important. So this is an eclectic uh, group of you know, women who brew, women who like to brew in their spare time, uh, enthusiasts, supporters, marketing, uh, and different business uh, women that come together to basically lift up the mission, which is get more women involved in beer in general. I like Pink Boots because it's an opportunity to really connect with other women whether that's having fun or learning something from them. And I don't get that space a lot of other ways. I'm in back of house, so I kind of meet the people that I work with on a regular basis, but not often people who are at other breweries or at companies. And coming from uh, some other experiences where I didn't have a Pink Boots chapter, it's been really great to have that community. I've met some of my nearest and dearest friends uh, through Pink Boots. Um, it has allowed me to connect with people all across the country, um, even people in other countries, so internationally, which I think is really cool. It's been an organization that's grown a lot recently, and in the past you used to just join membership and it was kind of just a list of women online, so I've been a member for a very long time. The big thing was women didn't realize there were other women brewers out there, so the founder was, she had taken some time off for work and she was touring the country and visiting breweries and why she was there, brewing collaborations with some of her friends, and she kind of started, it was just like a list. It was a list of women brewers around the country and then she posted it online and people just started adding more names to it and then it became a thing she's like let's make this the pink boot society kind of like the red hat society was big a few years back and from there it was like well what are we doing with it we're just names we're just you know and obviously networking they would get together at craft brewers conferences and then it became a little more focused that the idea was that these women wanted to share what they their knowledge with other women and encourage more people, more women to get into the beer industry. And that's kind of how it grew to now. It's over 2,700 members uh, internationally. There's chapters in Australia, Iceland, Germany, Belgium, all over the United States, South America too. They're pretty active. One of the things that I don't think a lot of people know is that you have to earn your pink boots. Just because you're a Pink Boots member doesn't mean you get a set of pink boots. You have to actually apply for and win a scholarship and provide a pay it forward presentation. And after that is all awarded, you get those pink boots. You earn those pink boots. You just don't buy your pink boots. So it's really special to watch my friends give these presentations and, and earn the pinnacle of, you know, what this organization represents who are never gonna like they're gonna come in and they're gonna order Budweiser even if they're in a craft beer bar we'll give them something else they still won't really care then you have what they're considering the Explorer 
They're not really very interested in educating themselves about beer or learning about new styles. They want to drink everything new and they want to try everything new. Um, they don't care how you're making it. They don't care if it's technically made well. They just want to, you know, you know, put it on untapped. For them, it's more about going to the brewery and checking it off. Of the I like to connect with other people in the industry, and that's kind of what collaborations of all kinds are about. Um, this one in particular is a little different because it is celebrating a certain um, demographic within the industry. Everybody was invited, but it is celebrating the women who are in this industry. So Lauren Hughes is the assistant head brewer here at Penn, and she kind of spearheaded the recipe and organizing the specifics of this day, but we have everybody out to get women involved in beer and making beer, you know, really just empower the women of our industry to like make something that represents them and say like, women made this beer uh, and, and highlight that. And I think that's really cool. This is my first time hosting a brew day. Uh, it's kind of awesome to be able to host. International Women's Day is kind of a day to celebrate women, and this is kind of a perfect day for us to get together and brew a beer together and kind of celebrate one another and what we do with our careers. I hosted the, the brew day several years ago for the Philadelphia chapter and last year I did organize all of the women within the brewery, uh, some of our steadfast deep-rooted customers that are females that have had a huge impact on the brewery. I invited them to come in and brew and my mom also came in and brewed. That was really special. Um, so that was last year but... So talk to me about what goes into hosting the big collab. Oh man, it's like herding cats. <laughs> uh, organizing and hosting the brew day is so much fun and it's really rewarding, but it is a lot of hard work. There's a lot of organization that has to go on behind the scenes. We kind of put it out to our members and we say who's interested this year. <laughs> like who has the time, who wants to, who can fit the brew day into their schedule, who wants to let a bunch of women into their brewery for the day. I think the reason that we are hosting the official one this year is because we are one of the few women owned breweries in the region and we're the new ones on the block, you know, so we get the opportunity to sort of showcase our space to many of these people for the first time. So it was really a great chance for us to be able to share what we're doing here. Today we are brewing a Belgian table beer. The style is traditionally called an ankle, which is a very sessionable table beer that the monks would have on their tables back in Belgium hundreds of years ago. It's brewed with coriander, so it's really nice and spicy, and we're dry hopping it with the Pink Boots blend also. We're naming it Hetty Reckless because Hetty Reckless was a really badass woman in Philly's history. She was an escaped slave and came to be uh, an abolitionist and started a women's shelter, so we wanted to celebrate a woman who made it possible for so many of us to be here. Um, also, she has a great name. The last name Reckless is so good. We're brewing a India Pale Lager today. Uh, the name's gonna be called Virago's Fury. Uh, Virago was a, a name for a female warrior. Yeah, it should be pretty crisp, but we're using the Pink Boots Hop Blend, uh, which I believe is Azaka, Idaho 7, Laurel. Uh, so it's gonna give it a lot of citrusy and tropical notes. So we're gonna have that lager crispness with a nice citrusy tropical hop backbone should be pretty good. We are brewing an IPA. We are using a new yeast, a strain of yeast that's new to us. It's called Juice from Imperial Labs. They're actually opening a lab in Philadelphia. It's an organ-based company opening up in Philly. Um, they've been kind enough to donate a whole pitch of yeast for this brew. We think that, that combination, that yeast, what we're doing to our water, and um, the way we're hopping this IPA, it's gonna be hazy IPA, um, pretty tropically, tropical hops forward. Um, yeah, should be fun. <laughs>
So the industry is definitely changing. It has changed. It's continuing to rapidly change. Uh, to give you perspective, um, some of my background, I was with the Brewers of Pennsylvania organization for the last five years. My first meeting was held at Trogues in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I was one of three women in a room of 200 people at their annual meeting. I made a joke about that, about not having to wait in line for the bathroom, but when I really thought about that, I went, actually, I, I kind of want to wait in line. Why is there not more representation? Why are there not more people that are women or frankly, marginalized groups in general, people of color? So really it's changed exponentially. Pink Boots uh, released, they did a, a data collection of women in brewing roles in 2014 and 4.5% of uh, brewers were women. In 2019, we're at about seven and a half percent. So we're making some, some very clear strides and I think Pink Boots is essential in that because giving awareness, giving opportunities, educational scholarships, it really is a group of people that are saying you can and you're welcome. I've been in the industry now for 20 years. I've been a bar owner. When I was coming up into the business, there were plenty of other bar owners that I could ask for advice and some help, but there weren't too many women. Then I would go out and I would hear from other women that, you know, like they were looking for more. They wanted some more role models. And also it's important for me to do this as a way to kind of give back for what I've had. And but also for a way to show other women like you can do this, too. And I think it's I'm hoping that everybody keeps paying it forward. Today is with the Pink Boots Society. I don't know that much about it. Um, I was actually on friends with the one uh, brewer here. His name's Nathan. And I was telling him how I wanted to get a society of women together to start brewing. And he goes, oh, Hannah, my boss, already has that organized. Do you want to come brew with us? And I was like, hell yeah, that sounds great. So here I am. My first real introduction to the Pink Boots Society in our local chapter was at one of these collaboration brew days several years ago. And that was sort of where I realized that, oh wait, there's other women like me out there. Um, it was really sort of the, the catalyst that I needed to become more involved. And since then, I've, I've definitely become much more involved. I feel like the more we do events like this, the brew day, we put that beer out, we talk about it, and focus on women in brewing, the more it becomes an everyday thing. You know, I hear from a few women like, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know there was a brewing school. I didn't know I could go out and learn how to brew. So it makes it a little more accessible every time that we do something like this. I got stolen from the giant beer garden where I worked for four years. I had been looking into getting into bartending and when the owner approached me about it after she'd seen me working, I came in and tried the beer and it was some of the best beer I'd ever had. So I took her up on her offer and I don't regret it. What do you like about the beer industry? I really like that it's, it's like coming into a giant family. Uh, it doesn't matter what brewery I go to anywhere in the world, I have never been accepted with anything less than open arms and just a general welcomeness. My background is in community economic development. I fell in love with breweries because they are such vibrant spaces of community. I love seeing how people walk through the door looking for a story, not just a beer, because they're looking to hear how the beer gets made. And with that sense of curiosity, they start turning towards each other and forming connections that I wasn't seeing in any other space. And I fell in love with it. And I started thinking about how I could bring my background in community development to create a space that was much more intentional about bringing all community members in and creating opportunity for people throughout our city. So that's something that we've been working hard on here at Triple Bottom. We're a fair chance business, so a lot of our team members have overcome a lot of barriers to employment to be with us. We are 50% women, 50% people of color, and uh, it's a really great team that I'm super proud to work with every day. I moved to Harrisburg and was working in politics. And uh, my office was actually right across the street from where Zero Day had just opened up. And I lived a block away, so it was naturally my little neighborhood brewery, my watering hole. And uh, I just hung out there probably way too often and ended up 
bartending one night a week and then just started asking lots of questions about the production side of it. Then when it was time to bring someone on full time to help with that, I was given the opportunity to do a training program, like an in-house training program. And through that, I was able to learn under Theo how to make beer. I am new to Pittsburgh, but in the time that I've been involved with the beer industry, first as a home brewer uh, and then kind of more in sales and now in production. When I was starting out, I really, I knew of a couple women and I think this organization is a big part of really bringing a lot more people into all facets of the industry and it's great to like just see that representation grow and uh, have people who are really knowledgeable about what they do, um, not just be there but be experts. We're doing a really good job. I am seeing more women becoming involved in craft beer in general, whether they're a consumer, whether they're in some sort of marketing capacity, production, education, whatever it is. I think women are becoming more involved and I have seen increase um, over the years, but we can do better. As much as the presence of females in the brewing industry has grown, there is still some negative connotations towards women in beer. Uh, working at the beer garden, it was often a lot of, well, let me see the man in charge, or is there a man I can talk to about a beer, when I was the most knowledgeable in the department, other than the person who was running it, obviously. So coming here, I found that my knowledge is taken a lot more seriously, and I think that having this presence and having the society helps to grow and empower women in the industry. One of the, the hardest things about breaking into this industry is that it can be intimidating, right? I mean, you have people that have been doing this for years before, before I've been doing it. Finding a support system, somebody that you can sort of identify with is hugely important. Um, it helps to kind of give you that confidence to move forward and say, yeah, I can do this. I think for me, being in the Pink Boot Society is about community. Um, it's about being with other women who have wrestled with similar issues that men in the industry don't get as, as open-minded as so many of them are. It's very different to be in it as a woman and to find that sense of, of community and moral support has been really powerful. Just getting females into industries that are male dominated is very important. Um, I'm really huge in equality and I just think that this was a really great opportunity. So, and as being one of the only female employees at Bird's Nest, I just really wanted to represent us. Many of the women that work in whatever capacity in their brewery can sometimes be the only woman or one of two women or something. So it's really great to get together and to see all the other women in the industry and get together and feel supported and not feel like you're the only one. When I first started brewing, I really felt a need to prove that I wasn't any different than anyone else in this industry. And things have happened in my life. I just uh, had a baby. And when I found out I was pregnant, I realized that I do have different needs than a man in this industry. And it was time to kind of address the lack of resources or just the lack of education and for women to know what to do when that happens. I tried to connect with other people in, especially in production, who had gone through the same thing and I could not connect with a single person. I couldn't find anyone else who was doing the job that I was doing but had gone through a similar experience. And as soon as I talked with my boss about it, you know, we came up with a plan and it, it was great. But um, sometimes those conversations can be kind of scary and I know I've talked to a lot of women who are in the field brewing and hesitant to start a family because they're scared of how it will affect their career or they're scared to enter the field because they either have a family or want to start one. So for me to connect with other women, it's just really important for me to show them that they're not alone and it is okay to, to celebrate your differences. I mean, we're, we're all equally capable of doing similar jobs, but sometimes our needs do have to be addressed and tailored. Um, you don't have to hide the fact that you are different, you know? I struggle with um, finding that balance of being a woman in a very male-dominated manufacturing industry with still maintaining my own femininity. Um, I don't normally look like this <laughs> on brew days. Like, normally I look like a bridge troll covered in God only knows what. Um, 
being able to honor that um, and, and recognize that we are women and not having to hide that is, I think, something that is empowering all on its own. Um, like, it's okay to be feminine and do a very physically demanding laborous job. <laughs> So we came up with Triple Bottom Brewing Company as an idea and have spent about four years really working on it. And in those four years, more and more breweries have opened in Philadelphia and several of them have women involved in leadership in some way. And that's been amazing to see. And I've learned a lot from those women who have done this before me. And I think Pink Boots plays a really valuable role in connecting all of us. Erin was the first person I met with when I knew that I wanted to start Triple Bottom. I reached out to her and she gave me a lay of the land. And then she knew me and she knew other people who were doing similar things and was constantly connecting us over years so that we were all learning from each other. So it's really been a powerful way to get to know people and sort of become stronger myself within the industry and within my knowledge in it. I enjoy the Pink Boots Society mostly because of the camaraderie and uh, the education, even just small conversations that we have during chapter meetings that aren't really meant to focus on a specific subject, I'll walk away thinking, wow, I just learned so much. And one of the things that I've started implementing at our chapter meetings is, what are you learning? And giving everyone an opportunity to talk about learning hurdles that they've recently overcome, whether it's a brewing problem or just a book that they read or an article they saw or a podcast they heard or something that they have taken to heart as far as education, furthering their education and sharing that with the group because that's how we all learn is we absorb things and then share them with others. So that's one of the greatest things that I think is coming out of this group is just the ability for all of us to lean on each other, encourage each other and learn from each other. Each chapter is kind of set up and even though we're given a set of guidelines, we kind of can be as active or inactive as, or, you know, we choose to be. The Philadelphia chapter, you know, for a while there we were just doing a meeting in the brew day once a year, but we had a couple local members who won scholarships and after spending some time with them after they came back from their time on the scholarship, they really talked about how much it meant to them and how it helped them grow. So we started becoming very active. I've definitely seen the actual like physical results of what Pink Boot Society does. So the scholarships that they give out and I've physically talked to the people that have won those scholarships and then taken that information and taken it back to their breweries. So it's it's a huge benefit to, to have that available to us. When I hear about one of the women like Carly who got a scholarship and how it's helped her open her own business, I'm like this is this is a good thing that what we're doing where you know we do the event like Bull Women and Beer where we raised over fifteen thousand dollars for our chapter and I can't wait to give that money away to somebody to go to a, you know brewing class and all so and have them you know have it help them further their career so and that's why I do it. So last year was the first this year we are hosting again the Bold Women in Beer Festival next to Love City. Many of the breweries that you see here today will be there will be participating and actually highlighting their Pink Boots collaboration brews. Uh, last year one of the best things that I could have heard um, was from a fellow female brewer who said this was the first beer festival that she ever attended um, as a vendor where it was just automatically assumed that she was a brewer and that she knew something about beer. Like the impact of that was just, it was phenomenal. I get chills just thinking about it. That's the embodiment of everything that we wanted uh, is to have a place that women are fully supported and are not questioned based on gender. It's just assumed that we know something. As with many events, the Bold Women in Beer Festival needed to go virtual due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Chit-chatting about beer. If you were able to purchase any of the Collaboration Brew Day beers, we are super, super grateful for your support because that helps, um, like I said, not only us on a local chapter level, but it also helps the entire international organization. I hope to see continual involvement. You know, any organization that stays the same isn't a successful organization. And I think that Pink Boots has been successful because they realize that they've had to change and amend and be inclusive and be pretty much the, the best foot forward for everyone else. There has been a lot of encouragement about 
not only women, but minorities in general being lifted up and putting a little focus on their involvement in the industry. And a lot of people are embracing that concept and kind of jumping in when they can. I know a lot of people in general are still kind of wondering what can I do? You know, especially the white males who are either working in or enjoying this industry are kind of like, I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. So for us to step forward with an event like Pink Boots Collaboration Brew Day is just one small step that we can take to shine a light on the fact that there are so many women who are actively involved in the beer industry. So it's just one small thing that we can do just to say, hey, here we are. I really, really, really firmly believe that education is the key to eliciting change. And I think that we only become better as a craft beer community through education, whether that's educating our own members or educating the general public. Um, it doesn't have to just be education about beer either. It can be educating people on the importance of diversity and inclusion. The brewing industry can be very male dominated. Uh, and this kind of gives women a chance to, to feel like they're empowered and also get the education that they want and seek out opportunities that they might not otherwise have. And I think that's just going to keep growing. I would like to say that if you are interested in joining Pink Boots and you are in the street, like, please hit us up. We're always looking for more membership. We love having people join and it's, it's an awesome group. Breaking through the noise uh, has traditionally been rather difficult uh, because you get labeled as a girl or woman organization or it's this, it's only for this, but actually it's a very inclusive organization. Yes, it is focused on women and providing opportunities, but I think International Women's Day raises the bar of awareness and it is a good opportunity for us to say this is for everyone. So we encourage male, non-disclosed, non-binary, whatever you are, we encourage you to at least participate in our events, get to know our members, because through everyone working together, we will actually be able to elicit change in this industry. For the future of Pink Boots and Women in Brewing, I hope that days like today become less rare. This is an annual day that we all look forward to because it's such a comfort to be in a room that's dominated by women and not men and to like have our voices heard in a way that doesn't happen on the day to day. So I hope that this continues to happen, that this doesn't become an annual thing, but that the industry changes enough that our voices are heard all the time. I hope that we keep making sure that this feels inclusive to everyone, to new craft beer drinkers who may be nervous about getting involved in the industry, and that we just keep our doors open for everyone. We just heard that Lauren Hughes of Penn Brewery will be head brewer at Necromancer Brewing Company, slated to open in March of 2021. Congratulations, Lauren. It's worth mentioning that many breweries, including ones represented in this episode, are struggling during this pandemic. We encourage you to support local breweries when you can. We also appreciate your support of this show. Your followings on Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube have been awesome. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button. You'll be the first to know about new episodes. Thanks for watching. To wrap up this episode, we shine a spotlight on a brewery that sits right off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Old Bedford Brewing Company serves up a bit of history with each beer. Until next time. Cheers. Bedford is known for the Whiskey Rebellion 1794, and we have one of the oldest working courthouses. The Omni Bedford Springs Resort has the oldest indoor swimming pool. There's a lot of history in Bedford, and we just wanted to keep the history alive with being the first licensed regulated brewery ever in Bedford County. So we wanted to go with the old Bedford with an E theme and keep everything historical. Whenever we first started planning to open up a brewery, we met with people from the borough council, people from some of the downtown Bedford organizations, and then just friends and family. And everyone felt the same that we did and that uh, Bedford didn't have a brewery. And at the time, uh, almost four years ago now, uh, that was one of the interesting parts about uh, the economic value of having a brewery in your small town. And being that third space where uh, another place for individuals to come to, whether it's their house, their, 
you know, their work, coffee shop, library, what have you. Now you have this other location, which historically, uh, that's what breweries were. Everyone had a little brewery at the corner or pub that they would go into and everybody would welcome each other and catch up on history of the families and how everyone was doing. Uh, so it was something that was very, uh, well, it was received very positively. And we are family friendly, so we have a lot of people coming in with the baby carrier and the three-year-old and they'll sit down and have their beers and the kids will be content. And We also have your 80, 90-year-old guys that come in and belly up to the bar and want to sit down and talk about war stories. We, we just want to keep it family-oriented and for everybody. When we first started, uh, we knew that there was going to be a lot of folks uh, that were going to come in that may not have been familiar with craft beer or you know, what the purpose of, of an unfiltered beer versus a pasteurized filtered beer that they may get down at the, the local six-pack shop. So we, our first challenge was to make sure that we had everything, uh, something for every palate, I guess you could say. Uh, so that's how we began looking at what recipes should I be recreating from my homebrew days and then from other friends that, that we have, other co-brewers that come in and help us out. And we all collaborated together and said, what, what should we put on tap at first? And it's grown from there. Uh, because we have the Omni Bedford Springs, it brings people in from all over the nation uh, or our proximity to Washington, D.C. or Baltimore. Pittsburgh, Philly, uh, we do find that there's a lot of folks who come through with some unique palettes. So we try to, to have something that, that they would like as well. And we have a great homebrew community here. There's people that are homebrewers here that make just phenomenal, phenomenal beer. There's a lot of people out there that have um, flavors and tastes and things of that nature that they expect us to have. And we try to, to put that up on the tap list as well. We grow our own hops and we have done some beers that are strictly our hops, but we try to implement some of the hops into the other beers. We usually only get one or two batches a year because we don't have a large hop field, but um, we also have cherries and peaches and apples that we grow on our property and we've incorporated some of those into our beers. Uh, just trying to keep it farm to cask. Bedford County is, is an agriculture county. So we just have some great farmers and ranchers around here. We have several large orchards here, and we have farm markets just within a 15 minute drive. And then we have local farmers and ranchers that will bring stuff into us, for instance, Dancing Star Farms. And they have been growing for the distilling community over the last couple of three or four years. And they just walked in one day, and Bob said, hey, I have this Bloody Witcher corn, do something with it. Sure. Uh, so that's where we did a Kentucky Common, worked at the springs, worked with Wiggle, we got barrels, we had everything else, and now it's, it's Bedford Butcher Brew, and it's exclusively carried by the springs. Uh, but that all started from one of the farmers just walking in and saying, I have a product, we use it for distilling, can you use it for beer? And uh, that's, that makes it a lot of fun. Those experimentations is what brought me into identifying different barrels with different beer styles that everybody's gonna like. Uh, to include a barrel release that we're just doing right now, uh, which is uh, from our friends at Liberty Pole Distillery out in Washington, PA. They gave us a peated bourbon barrel to put our Irish red in because a, a band from Ireland was supposed to come in and play. And we made a beer for them two years ago and they wanted another beer this year. Uh, well, it turns out our Chamber of Commerce now built a drive-in theater outside of town to view the concert um, a movie. And so we're still releasing it. Uh, so, you know, for me, being able to have those uh, unique beers that you can only get here is all my favorites.